Luke, you've got a story for us today, don't you? Well, yes, I do. Sophie in the chat has asked, are we getting existential now? And to that I say, is this a podcast that I'm a part of? Oh, yes, Luke's of, here, of course, course we're getting, getting existential. existential. The New Scientist has an article entitled, Is the Universe Conscious? It may oh, seem another impossible universe right. question. <laughs> until you do the maths. Now, this is so interesting because this is like the, as, uh, according to this article, it's like the first serious attempt to try and quantify what consciousness is from a mathematical perspective. This is a really difficult um, thing to do because how can you probe something that is he inherently subjective? Like, we, we can work out, for example, what causes the smell of coffee, we can work out what particles cause the smell of coffee, how that is interacts down your nose, but we can we don't really have any idea how you get that gives rise to the subjective experience of coffee, or what even is the subjective experience of coffee. You can't put it into words, right? Um, and even those words would just be like, well, it smells like this other thing, and then it's like, well, how does that smell like that, right? Um, I hate that. <laughs> yeah. So this new form of thought, ma mathematic theory of consciousness, requires you to make one little jump, which is the idea that everything, every piece of matter, every, every fundamental particle is in some way, on some very small level, conscious. Oh, I, I just had, I just had a idea. thought and it, it was, yeah, go on, share the thought. it's really not worth sharing. I was just thinking oh, it is. a bogey's conscious. Well, yeah. bogey, <laughs> well, this is why okay, I didn't say anything. This, <laughs> in this model, this, yes. According to this model, the individual particles that make up the bogey may be conscious, but the the bogey is not conscious as a bogey. Oh, just right? as the little particles inside just of it. Just as the little particles inside the bogey. And, and they won't necessarily things, know they're a bogey. Okay. So, <laughs> this is traditionally kind of passed off as pseudoscience and is named something called panpsychism. Now, the problem with it, though, is that... Um, it's fundamentally, I think, probably unprovable because you can't prove something is something subjective. Uh, like I can't prove Cory is actually conscious or I can't prove Noah is actually conscious. It's not a thing I can possibly do. I can ask you all sorts of questions, but you might be responding in a very uh, good imitation of consciousness, for example. It's like a Turing now, test sort of thing. Well, exactly. But the Turing test was like ultimately found to be completely ridiculous because it's very simplistic and we can make computers that can pass the Turing test very easily these days. And it doesn't mean that they're conscious. It just means they're very good at imitating consciousness. Yeah. So th 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 that's what I mean in that, like the Turing test was this apparently test for consciousness, but ultimately um, you can, you can, you can uh, get past it. And our test yeah. for consciousness, which is like, you know, interacting with people for our entire lives could also be a very poor way of deter determining if something is actually conscious or not. Yeah. So, for a moment, you're taking the assumption that matter on, on the individual level is has a, a fundamental form of consciousness. Now, so the basic idea of this is um, a system, take any, any, any physical system that you believe has consciousness, for example, the human brain. So you have individual subsystems inside the brain, like the center that does speech or the center that does movement or the center that narrates and tries to work out what's going on in the world. And inside of each of those subsystems, you have individual neurons. And then inside of into the individual neurons, those neurons are made up of particles that all have their own individual um, consciousness, right? Now, these separate areas of the brain, they, they're built in such a way that they flow information between them. So, for example, our eye passes information to our visual cortex, uh, which passes information to our memory, which passes information to our narrator, for example. Um, and because there is a flow of information happening, you start getting these individual systems are reliant on the information coming from other systems. And so they start being tied together. The arising of subjective consciousness comes from different parts of a system, like a brain, being dependent on other parts of the system. And therefore, their fundamental consciousness kind of is deferred to the overall system. So basically, the idea is that you could potentially measure the consciousness of a system by measuring how much each section of the system relies on information from the other sections. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, I mean, would, yeah. What would you define consciousness as? Mm, exactly. Is it, is it just something a, relying on something funny. else and working having a together? Well, no, it's, it's, yes. Basically, what it suggests is, is that when a system, when the individual parts of a system are sufficiently reliant on the other parts of the system, 
a a conscious self arises out of that. Uh, okay, yeah. But so if you look at ant colonies, beehives, schools of fish, there's this there's this thing called um I think it might apply to them, but there's this thing called emergence wherein um sort of stupid things become smarter together effectively. Yeah. Um and so if, if you get a lot of if you get a lot of individual parts um that then yeah kind of rely on each other for information and feed information back and forth and on their own aren't like are are there are on their own individual units in the same sense that a neur like each neuron in your brain is its own individual unit but they come together to make a, a greater whole it, it's it's kind of it's kind of like that yeah i'm just not sure what i assumed consciousness was before we had well, this never, conversation well, I've never thought about it. Yeah. Defined, is it no i is just it, thought it was uh, like have like living being awake yeah being awake <laughs> It's, I think it's but, I think yeah. awareness. Well, is, is there more of... than like one type of definition for consciousness? I think a key a key differentiation to make there as well is that intelligence and um, and uh, consciousness aren't necessarily the same thing. They're, right. The thing is, we, we're, they're they're definitely related. We see we see that they're related. You know, like um, animals that are able to recognize themselves in mirrors tend to be more intelligent than than animals that that aren't. Yes. But. Yes. Um, as properties, they're not necessarily the, exactly the Well, I the know a thing. lot of dogs that just don't understand that standing in front of a mirror and barking at it is them barking at themselves. Yeah, well, but but equally so, then if you get a raven and put it in front of a mirror, it recognizes, it'll recognizes probably recognize itself, and they're a lot smarter than dogs. Are they? Yeah, ravens are very smart. Don't mess up with a raven, yeah, because are. they will, yeah. as a group, they, they will come back at you. Tiny they... bird brains. <laughs> I think I think an interesting, an interesting thought of this is, do e does each individual part... Um, of that consciousness know that it is part of a consciousness yeah because, so no because yeah, having well, exactly. a knowing is like you can't well exactly so <laughs> but you can extrapolate that out to the entire world so like ant colonies build um like ant colonies can change the environment and can act as a whole the human race on the planet acts as a sort of act, can act as a sort of whole and if you think about um lots of different planets together sharing information that can yeah. then also act as a whole to the point where you can think of even the universe as a as a big as a brain. big brain yeah. that um and and like we're just the we could just be because we don't know any other planets yet we could be just that first step um like that first sort of um like that first um sort of organism that developed yeah. like sort of senses and was then able to kind of experience the world and yeah. and make sort of decisions um go towards food go away from food sort of thing um the the, the headline of the story was is the universe conscious? And Corey has sort of started to touch on this possibility, which is basically that, um, you know, you have individual systems inside the universe, like planets, that could become increasingly dependent on each other and depend on the outcomes of each other. So, for example, the, the way that you define something as being um, dependent on something else is that if you change the properties of one thing, all the other things change as well. The measurement you do to determine how conscious something is, is called phi, P-H-I, which is a measurement of how um, interdependent different structures in the brain or different structures in any physical system are on each other. And supposedly, it is only when, quote, phi is maximal that consciousness appears, which suggests that basically, in a sort of really roundabout way, it was a long section, um, that only the most complex part of any system become, gains a okay. conscious self. The individual parts seed, in, in seed being to give away um, their consciousness to the whole. Now, what this suggests in a very strange way, to my understanding of this very complex um, problem, this is from a, a guy I really like called Roger, Roger Penrose, who's an Oxford mathematician. It suggests that as information becomes more complex, other systems become less conscious. So if you become more conscious in one way, you're actually, other systems are becoming less consciousness, less conscious, which suggests that as human consciousness became much more interdependent of different structures in the brain, it actually made the universe less conscious. We as a structure in our brain are incredibly complex and incredibly interdependent on like if this bit of my brain does something, this other bit of my brain does something, which suggests that actually um, it may have what they call excluded the consciousness of the universe. Um, so perhaps way back in time before the conscious um, evolution of, human, of humanity, 
the overall system, the Earth or the galaxy or the universe was conscious. But as we became more complex, those other things became less conscious. And so perhaps if we start becoming more in tune with our environment, if we become more um, interdependent on our environment and less about ourselves, we as individuals become less conscious and the universe as a whole becomes more conscious. Does that make sense? Yeah, and that's probably yeah, what will happen yeah, yeah. as we start linking ourselves up with computers, chips in our brains, things like that. Those will make the systems of, hum of human bodies more interdependent on each other and will become basically like a hive mind is my sort of extrapolation of this is that we'll become like ants, we'll become like a colony of people rather than individual separate selves. Um, the final problem with this is that if you're trying to measure the phi, the, um, the complexity, the interdependence of a system, if you try to calculate that for the 86 billion neurons in the human brain, it would take longer than the age of the universe. One mathematician worked it out as calculating just for a 302 neuron brain, it would take five times 10 to the 79 years on the standard computer. That's five That's a, with uh, 79 very after it. long time. Wow, yeah, that's very interesting. Like, thank you for bringing that story to us. If you enjoyed that clip, head over to patreon.com forward slash SciGuys where you can find the full show. Or you can stay here and catch up on all SciGuys episodes. Or you can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at SciGuysPod to find out when we're doing more live shows. <laughs>